Hi everyone. Welcome to amazing channel of Brilliant Katha. When you are rubbing one body with another body, electrons are transferred from two from one object to what? Another object. Okay, this process, this type of electricity is been given a name. Halogen connected carbon sp3, then it's connected to benzene. See all of you, halogen connected. What is this carbon hybridization? Full single bond sp3, see then a benzene. denominator these minus 1 and minus 5 should never be included should never be included in the solution homo circle caudal fin it's giving two equal lobes but in case of cartilage we just look at here one big lobe is there one small lobe is there you cannot cut into two equal half this fin Hello, hi, good evening once again. Welcome to Brilliant Qatar. So you know that this is day five. So we started four days back and it is successfully going on a live discussion of all the subjects, physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology. I hope your preparation for the board exam is going very, very well. Now you know that the days are getting closer and closer. So don't let your confidence level go down. So today in this session we are going to discuss two important chapters from physics that is moving charges and magnetism and magnetism and matter. My dear students, see you know that the time that we are getting only one hour in this one hour we are trying to cover, uh, trying to discuss maximum questions as possible but still you know that we have a limit. We have a limit to discuss all the questions. We cannot go through all the concepts. So whatever question I am discussing in this session you just try to uh, think or recall the ideas related to that particular question and try to solve all the questions from that okay and i hope uh, there should be like a quick response from your side you just keep your book open when i'm doing question try to do along with me try to do the calculation along with me and uh, reply to all the questions as quick as possible so that we can make the session very very interactive so without without uh, wasting our time i'm going to the first question before that please please start your uh, comments quickly as early as possible yes i can see devan hi devan good evening so let's go to the first question right. this is our first question a galvanometer with a coil of resistance 10 ohm gives a full scale deflection when a current of 1 milli ampere is passed through it the resistance of the shunt needed to convert this galvanometer into an ammeter of range 10 ampere is nearly direct question right which chapter it is moving charges and magnetism which topic we have two important topics similar to this one is conversion of galvanometer into an ammeter and the other is conversion of galvanometer into a voltmeter my dear students you can see that this is a question based Based on conversion of galvanometer into an ammeter so you know that to convert a galvanometer into an ammeter we need to connect a shunt a low resistance parallel to what the galvanometer all of you know that concept so here what they're asking calculate the resistance of the shunt shunt so which means it's a direct question just recall the formula for shunt resistance what is it s is equal to shunt resistance formula s is equal to what is it i g g by i minus ig you know that this is the formula for calculating shunt okay so what are the quantities here what is ig ig is the range of the given galvanometer ig is the range of the given galvanometer g is the resistance of the galvanometer i i is the range of the ammeter that we are going to make and ig is again galvanometer range so check the question 
uh, coil resistance so what is the resistance of the galvanometer it is 10 ohm gives a full scale deflection when a current of 1 milliampere is passed through it means what is the maximum value of current that you can measure using that galvanometer 1 milliampere that is nothing but the range so we can substitute the data ig what is ig range of the galvanometer it is given as 1 milliampere so 1 milli that means 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 that is the range of the galvanometer into g what is g resistance of the galvanometer what is it it's 10 divided by i minus ig i range of the ammeter 10 10 minus ig ig is again 1 milliampere that means 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 1 into 10 to the 10 to the power minus you can uh, start your comments you can tell me the answer so listen here numerator it is 10 into 10 power minus 3 now look at the denominator there you can see 10 minus 1 into 10 power minus 3 what is 1 into 10 power minus 3 it is 0 0.001 so 10 minus 0 0.001 means compared to 10 0 0.001 is a small number that means this is negligible compared to this 10 so you can neglect that part and remaining part will be we get what 10 power minus 3 into 10 in numerator there is a 10 in the denominator 10 10 got cancelled so the answer will be what 10 power minus 3 ampere what is 10 power minus uh, sorry 10 power minus 3 ohm what is 10 power minus 3 0 0.001 ohm 0 0.001 ohm means which option it is option b option b is the right answer for this question so yes please comment all of you yeah uh, option B is the right answer for this so along with this only you need to recall the other thing also that means how can you convert galvanometer to a voltmeter it can be done by connecting this is low resistance in parallel and that can be done by connecting high resistance in series and what is the formula for that high resistance do you remember R is equal to V by IG minus G this is the formula for finding the resistance which is needed to convert a galvanometer into a voltmeter I hope this is clear for you so I'm going to the next question now question number two listen a charged body is moving along a circle in a magnetic field b mass 10 to the power 5 kilogram velocity is 1 meter per second magnetic field is 10 power minus 2 tesla charge is q to the power 7 coulomb what is the radius of its circular track radius of its circular track which topic one of the very important topic from moving charges and magnetism magnetic lorentz force that's a very very important you can see a question from that topic in almost all the paper so what is the formula for magnetic lorentz force you know that it is qvb sin theta force experienced by a charged particle moving in a magnetic field qvb sin theta and there are different cases what are the cases like if it is entering in a magnetic field at an angle zero then force will be zero at an angle 180 the force will be zero if theta is equal to 90 degree then the force will be maximum because sin 90 is equal to 1 the charge follows a circular path this question is based on that concept we, here it is given a charged body is moving in a circle in a magnetic field so if you don't remember that formula for radius directly we can just use the concept basic concept again what is it Lorentz force formula is qvb if theta is equal to 90 and if it moves in a circular path you know that it needs centripetal force that centripetal force formula you can equate with this so what is centripetal force equation mv square by r mv square by r is equal to qvb v v got cancelled so r is equal to mv by qb this is the formula for the radius if you can buy hard that's good radius is equal to mv by qb now we can find the answer r is equal to m what is mass mass of the body 10 to the power 5 kilogram velocity is given 1 meter per second divided by charge charge where is the charge yeah 10 to the power 7 coulomb into magnetic field 10 power minus 2 10 power minus 2 now things are very easy so this is 10 7 and minus 2 will become 5 so 10 raised to 5 divided by 10 raised to 5 answer is 1 1 meter is the answer 1 meter is the right answer that means it is option option a is the right answer for this question so yes sattvic is there is correct answer listna hi jos aditya right all of you please respond quickly to all the questions comment your answers 
so i'm going to the next question now the substance which can be strongly magnetized a question from magnetism and matter classification of magnetic materials you know on what basis this materials has been classified it is its behavior when it is kept in a magnetic field you know that one is strongly attracted other is uh, weakly attracted other is weakly repelled so here the question they are asking the substance which can be strongly magnetized kyuk yes strongly magnetized is what it's very simple it's ferromagnetic ferromagnetic is the one which is strongly magnetized when kept in a magnetic field and you know that uh, weakly attracted is what weakly magnetized is paramagnetic and weakly repulsion is what diamagnetic diamagnetic oh, right so here the answer for the question is ferromagnetic strongly magnetized is ferromagnetic substance let's go to question number four now force acting on a charged particle moving in a magnetic field will not depend upon will not again a question based on lorentz force will not depend upon comment 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 please quickly yes will not so again it is based on lorentz force what is it f is equal to qvb sin theta will not depends upon so you can check option by option option a itself is mass mass is not there in the formula so the answer is what mass anyway you can check the other options as well amount of charge charge is there velocity velocity is there intensity of magnetic field that is also there so that means the force is independent of what mass mass of the particle so this is the right answer yes ramarajan yes next i'm going to the next next question question number 5 two straight long conductors carry current in the same direction the magnetic force on each other will be two straight long conductors carry current in the same direction then what is the nature of the magnetic force is it repulsive attractive zero neutral again an important topic if two conductors if you are arranging two conductors like this first conductor carrying current i1 there is another conductor which is carrying current i2 you know that there is a force between these two there is a force between these two discuss whether it is attractive or repulsive after some time tell me what is the magnitude of the force first of all that is an important derivation also there is chance of asking it for 3 marks as well so what is the force magnitude force magnitude is if the distance of separation is r then force is <coughs> mu not i1 i2 by 2 pi r this is the magnitude of the force but here they are not asking the magnitude they are asking will it be attractive or repulsive so surely if there are two conductors uh, carrying current each other they are arranged parallelly there will be a force and what is the nature you know that if the currents are in the same direction the force is attractive and if currents are in opposite direction the force is repulsive that's our point so here it is given carry current in the same direction so what is the answer what is the answer the answer is attractive because they are carrying current in the same direction so the answer for this question is attractive okay so easy question and what about if it is in opposite direction the current will be repulsive i mean current uh, force will be repulsive so the next question question number 6 listen two electron beams concept is same my dear students two electron beams are moving in a uh, parallel in space but in opposite directions then so the identical but in the first question it was current here it is given two electron beams are traveling so one electron beam this is another electron beam in the first case electrons are traveling in this way and here the electrons are moving in this way you know that flow of charges is nothing but current so it's just like we can compare this situation where like two currents are traveling in opposite directions then what is the nature of the force quickly answer yes sathik is saying that b yes dz tuck come and your answer it's b again right they will repel each other because they are traveling in opposite direction they will repel each other so the answer for this question is b so two questions based on the same concept that is a force between two parallel current carrying conductors so i am going to the next question now question number 7 the magnetic induction and the magnetic field inside the iron core of an electromagnet is 1.07 weber per meter square and 150 ampere per meter then the relative permeability of iron is relative permeability of iron 
from which chapter it is from magnetism and matter in this chapter hope you remember we have studied some important terms related to magnetism what are they let's quickly revise it the first one is what magnetic intensity magnetic intensity it is the applied field isn't it magnetic intensity that is represented by which letter h so the first quantity is magnetic intensity h number two is intensity of magnetization intensity of magnetization it's i it is defined as the magnetic dipole moment per unit volume of a substance you know that third one is what magnetic induction b this is the total field inside the substance so these are all related to the process of magnetization how can you magnetize a substance you can keep that substance in a magnetic field it will be magnetized so the uh, ability of the applied field is called magnetic intensity intensity of magnetization is a measure of magnetization it is defined as a magnetic moment per unit volume represented by i and the third one is magnetic induction it is a total field and fourth one is what it is susceptibility chi you know what is the significance of chi chi is the ratio of these two i and h chi is i by h and the fifth term is what permeability mu permeability meaning you know that how to find this it is the ratio of b and h so permeability mu is equal to what b by h so these are the relations so based on these terms they can ask question so this is one of the question based on this concept check the question again the magnetic induction and the magnetic field inside the iron core of an electromagnet is so first one is given magnetic induction so magnetic induction b is given as what 1.07 1.07 is the magnetic induction yes and what is the other thing given magnetic field inside so how much the uh, field is induced so it is uh, the applied field is given this one is total field induced and this is the applied field 150 that is h value is given 150 ampere per meter the first one is the induced one and this is the applied one okay so from this you can find what mu value mu is equal to what b by h so what is b value one point 07 divided by hs 150 150 okay is it the answer for this question no because you know that this is permeability but they are asking relative permeability this is permeability of the medium we need relative permeability relative permeability is mu r it's not mu mu r so how can we find mu r from this you know that mu is nothing but mu naught mu r so mu naught mu r is equal to 1.07 by 150 then how can we find mu r so mu r is equal to this divided by mu naught that is 1.07 divided by 150 into what is mu naught value it is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 that is mu naught value you know that now we can take that minus 7 to the numerator we get what 1.07 divided by 150 into 10 to the power 7 divided by 4 pi now we got the answer 1.07 by 150 10 raised to 7 by 4 pi it's option d option d yes uh dj tech sorry please check the answer is what option d because option a will give you what mu value here they're asking mu r value relative permeability only so please go through it important question i'm going to the next one next question i hope this is very clear for you question number eight an electron executes a half circle of radius r in a magnetic field then the work done is electron executes half a circle of radius r in a magnetic field so there is a magnetic field let me show there is a uniform magnetic field like this okay in this uniform magnetic field you know that if a charge is entering in a uniform magnetic field uh, normally it will follow a circular path so an electron is moving in a half circle so we can show it like this then the question they are asking is what is the work done work done quickly right yes i can see the answer from g i don't know the name of g yeah it's given as option a others also please comment what is the answer for this question 
what is the answer for this question it's very simple because you know that circular path circular path means this movement is due to the centripetal force isn't it there is no other acceleration so centripetal force direction is towards the center displacement is tangentially so what is the angle between these two 90 degree that's in grade 11 also work energy power chapter studied an important point that work done by centripetal force alone is always zero because theta is equal to 90 degree Yes, Sanjay, right answer. It is. It will be zero. Answer will be zero. Circular path work done by centripetal force. Okay. So the answer is zero. Option A is right answer. Yes, G, you can comment your name. Your answer is correct. Can I go to the next? So uh, why it is zero means it is the work done is by the centripetal force. So centripetal force will do zero work only. Okay. So I'm going to the next question now. Question number nine. Current loop placed in a non-uniform magnetic field experiences, experiences again in electrostatics discussion. Hope you remember there was a question when an electric dipole is kept in a uniform magnetic field, it will experience what? In a non-uniform magnetic field, it will experience what? Hope you remember the answer for that question. If you are keeping a bar magnet or a dipole in a uh, electric dipole in a uniform electric field, uniform electric field means it will experience only torque because net force is zero. Non-uniform electric field it will experience both force and torque this is a similar question my dear students a current loop current loop you know that a current carrying loop will be behaving like a dipole so a current loop is kept in a non-uniform magnetic field so it is similar to a torque uh, an electric dipole is kept in a non-uniform electric field so what is the answer now you can comment it easily yes sanjay mohammed ibrahim G and everybody is commenting it's D right answer very good like why because it's a uni non-uniform magnetic field in a non-uniform magnetic field a dipole will experience both force and torque so what is the answer for this question means it's option D right very good very good I'm going to the next question now question number 10 I'm expecting the answer from answer for this question from all of you in a circular coil of radius R the magnetic field at the center is proportional to Magnetic field due to a circular coil, you know that there is only one application of byte's Harvard's law, that's a long derivation and after at the end, we got a formula for magnetic field due to a circular coil, do you remember? If A is the radius of the coil and R is the distance, we have a formula for magnetic field, B is equal to what is it? Mu naught n i a square by 2 into a square plus r square whole raised to 3 by 2 this is the expression for the magnetic field to a circular coil but in this question they are asking what at the center center means r value will be zero so we get b as what b at the center you know the formula it is mu naught n i by 2a remember students here a is the radius okay mu naught n i by 2a so in this question they are asking how it is related so which option is correct yes satvik right answer sanjay right answer G and DJ tech, right? It is option C, inversely proportional to R. Inversely proportional to R. Magnetic field to a circular coil. Please note that this is an important formula. Numerical also they can ask. Hope you remember there are plenty of scopes for asking questions like they will give you one circular coil, another circular coil, arranging it perpendicular to each other, one on the top, one on the bottom. So like that there are many scopes of asking numerical for two marks and three marks. So please go through these type of questions carefully. MCQs, this type of question only mainly comes. So I am going to the next question number 11. The magnetic moment of a magnet is 5 ampere meter square. If the pole strength is 25 ampere meter, what is the length of the magnet? Very simple question again. Very simple question. Please comment the answer. So what are the data given? Magnetic dipole moment is 5 ampere meter square. Dipole moment is 5 ampere. Pole strength is what? 25 ampere meter. Then what is the length of the magnet? What is pole strength? Pole strength is nothing but the magnetic charge. You know that. It is similar to charge in electrostatics. In electrostatics, what is a formula for dipole moment q into 2l q into 2l okay in magnetism we had an identic formula like uh, magnetic moment m is equal to q m into 2l so what is this q m that is called the pole strength it's magnetic charge q m so here they are asking length of the magnet length of the magnet is 2l so how can we find 2l 2l is equal to m divided by q m so now it's a simple question come in your answers quickly very simple magnetic dipole moment is 5 
by 25. Uh, Ibrahim, please be careful. 5 by 25. 1 by 5 meter. 1 by 5 meter. Okay. So, 1 by 5 meter means here all are given in what? Centimeter only. So, 1 by 5 meter means how many centimeter? Please check and tell me. Yes. G. That is the right answer. 1 by 5 is equal to 20 centimeter. Isn't it? So, 20 centimeter is the right answer for this question. 1 by 5 of a meter. Is it clear, Ibrahim? Yes, so the answer is option <coughs> B. Okay, so I'm going to the next question now. Question number 12. For which of the following substance, the magnetic susceptibility is independent of temperature? Again, a question based on classification of magnetic material and its properties. Temperature dependence. Okay, I think you can answer this. Yes. Q. What is the answer? Uh, the magnetic susceptibility independent of temperature for which of the following material yes you know that this is for diamagnetics for paramagnetic it is inversely proportional for ferromagnetic also it is inversely proportional to the temperature that means independent of temperature is for what diamagnetics only susceptibility of a diamagnetic substance is independent of temperature okay next question question number 13 force acting on a conductor of length 2 meter and carrying a current 5 ampere kept perpendicular to the magnetic field of 0 0.5 tesla is again a direct question numerical direct numerical what is the topic force acting on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field let me write the formula for that what is it force acting on a current carrying conductor you know that it is i into l cross b or i l b sin theta is the formula for the magnetic force acting on a current carrying conductor i l b sin theta so here it is given perpendicular so perpendicular means sin 90 sin 90 is 1 so we get i l b i l b substitute the values what is i i is 5 length 2 meter magnetic field is 0 0.5 we got the answer it is equal to 5 newton can i check yes satik dj tech sanjay yeah g and everybody got the right answer very good keep going students we need to score all 24 marks from mcqs including case study okay i'm not going to make even a single mistake you can do that so i'm going to the next question number 14. electron enters into a uniform magnetic field at an angle of 60 degrees path will be i'm not going to solve this because you need to answer this at an angle of 60 degree, it follows which path? Kyuk. Yes, Sanjay, right answer. Others also, yes, G. Everybody is giving the right answer. You know that it follows helical path. Helix is the answer. If it is uh, 0 or 180 degree, it moves straight, you know that, without any deflection. If it is 90 degree, perpendicular means it follows a circular path. In between 0 and 90, it follows helical path you know that right magnetic yes Fahad, right answer magnetic force uh, Lorentz force based question again question number 15 yeah this is uh, numerical so you need to be very careful my dear students for this type of question you know the answer but don't make calculation mistake here what is what they're asking what is the net force on the rectangular coil shown in figure rectangular coil shown in figure take your time i'll be doing it on the board at the same time you also try and comment your answers along with me or before i am doing i'm expecting answer from your side okay so what is the net force on the rectangular coil so you can see there is a rectangular coil and this one is carrying current in upward direction this is also carrying current in upward direction but you know that when it comes on this side the current will be flowing in downward direction we have discussed these type of questions in the class like two parallel conductors carrying current in the same direction will attract each other that means this wire will attract this loop but at the same time this one and this one they are carrying current in opposite direction they will ripple so there are two forces acting on this loop we need to find the net force okay so what is the formula once again f is equal to force between two parallel current carrying wires formula f is equal to mu naught i1 i2 by 2 pi r 2 pi r so we need to start with the force one first force 
okay i am writing it as f1 that means force between these two how can i write mu naught what is i1 i1 is 2 i2 is 1 divided by 2 pi into what is r r is 2 centimeter that i can write as 2 into 10 power minus 2 2 into 10 power minus 2 right this is f1 but is it enough no because you know that this is the formula for force acting per unit length of the wire force acting per unit length of the wire here the length of the wire is given as 15 centimeter the height of that wire is 15 centimeter so we should multiply with that as well so 15 centimeter means we get 15 into 10 to the power minus 2 so we can cancel this one so what is our final answer here we have we can have mu naught by 2 pi into what 15 see mu naught i1 i2 by 2 pi r i1 is 2 i2 is 1 ampere r is this distance that is 2 centimeter 2 into 10 power minus 2 into the length 15 so this 2 2 got cancelled we have mu naught into 15 by 2 pi so i am keeping as it is this is f1 okay now let me go to f2 f2 is force between what this one and this one so there also you can write mu naught into current i1 is 2 i2 is again 1 length is again 15 into 10 power minus 2 that i am not writing because it, anyway it will be cancelled 2 pi into what is the new distance from here to here here to here we need to take this distance is given as 10 centimeter this is 2 so 10 plus 2 12 will come so we can write it as 2 pi into 12 into 10 power minus 2 that 10 power minus 2 and 10 power minus 2 will be cancelled so what is our answer so we can see that it is equal to Uh, I'm writing f2 is equal to mu naught by 2 pi into we get 15 divided by 6 will come 15 by 6 now which force dominates surely f1 dominates because the distance is small so net force only they are asking it is f1 minus f2 so we can subtract f1 minus f2 what is f1 mu naught by 2 pi so mu naught by 2 pi into 15 is common in both so mu naught by 15 mu naught by 2 pi into 15 and here it will be 1 and here there is 6 so what is the answer we are getting mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 divided by 2 pi into 15 into we get 6 minus 1 5 by 6 okay so now we can solve this pi pi got cancelled 2 and then this will be 3 so 75 by 3 25 into 10 to the power minus 7 newton yes that's our answer anybody got this 25 into 10 to the power minus 7 newton and so 25 into 10 power minus 7 newton you can see there are two options one is given as 25 into 10 power minus 7 newton moving towards the wire and the other is moving away from the wire we got the magnitude now we need to understand what is the exact direction i told you this attractive force dominates so it will be towards the wire so what is the right answer for this question it is option a 25 into 10 power minus 7 towards the wire yes g right answer i think you guys are doing it so please don't make calculation mistake there is chances very very high for making mistake like you may forget to take this distance you may forget to take that 15 centimeter don't do that be careful while doing all these things so the answer is a okay uh is the derivation for this important derivation uh, imran is asking derivation between uh, for force between two parallel conductors is an important derivation imran it has been asked many times that means the derivation of this formula okay you have to study that not only that based on that hope you remember there is another probable question that is define one ampere based on this formula that is also an important thing okay so don't skip that one it's an important derivation i'm going to the next question number 16 A ferromagnetic substance of susceptibility 3 into 10 power minus 4 is placed in a magnetic field of 4 into 10 power minus 4 ampere per meter. Then the intensity of magnetization in the unit of ampere per meter. This is a direct question. It's a very simple question if you remember the relation between susceptibility and 
yeah relation between susceptibility and this magnetic field do you remember which we already discussed in one of the previous question chi formula what is chi susceptibility is equal to chi is equal to i by h this is the formula isn't it i by h here h is the applied field i is the magnetization intensity of magnetization so here they are asking intensity of magnetization is so it's like we need to just multiply chi and h so i is equal to chi into h okay so now tell me what is chi value susceptibility is 3 into 10 to the power minus 4 into h value is 4 into 10 to the power minus 4 so what is the answer it is 12 into 10 to the power minus 8 unit is already given in the question so uh, 12 into 10 to the power minus 8 it's option option c option c okay right very good sattvic correct answer but my dear students like it's you may think that it's a very simple question just a multiplication but it's simple if you know the formula only if you don't know this relation you may think that how can we find all these things so please go through these things carefully then you can score very good mark okay next next question question number 17 direct simple the examples of diamagnetic paramagnetic and ferromagnetic materials are respectively see classification of materials when you are studying dia para ferro you have to study its properties and some of the examples also you should remember you should remember i think you know the answer for this quickly yes g is saying it is option a others also dia para ferro that is the order yes sanjay right answer yes others also like see i'll tell you some of the example for diamagnetic what are the important examples copper right copper is a diamagnetic substance it's almost in every question you can see copper as an example for diamagnetic copper water is a diamagnetic substance alcohol antimony bismuth these are all diamagnetic substance for uh, paramagnetic aluminium is one of the important example aluminium chromium liquid oxygen then for uh, ferromagnetic you know iron cobalt nickel so what is the answer here yes option a is the right answer for this it is copper for dia aluminum for para and iron is for what ferromagnetic substance okay so i'm going to the next question now question number 18 again a direct question my dear students i'm not going to explain this if m is the magnetic moment and b is the magnetic field then torque torque formula torque formula quick what is the answer for this question torque acting on a dipole of magnetic moment m kept in a magnetic field all of you yes g and dj tuck right answer sanjay right answer it is cross product isn't it m cross b option c torque in electrostatics we have a formula what is it p cross e compare and study p cross e p is electric dipole moment e is the strength of the electric field in magnetism the formula is what m cross b m is the magnetic dipole moment and b is the intensity of magnetic field so direct question easy question question number 19 again a question from magnetism relative permeability of iron is 5500 its magnetic susceptibilities so know the formula please apply and tell me the answer yes hisham it was the right answer now tell me the answer for this question relative susceptibility we have to find relative permeability is given mu r is given then what is chi we have a formula what is the relation what is the relation between these two mu r mu r is equal to what 1 plus chi you can check the magnetism chapter you can see this relation 1 plus chi then chi is equal to what mu r minus 1 mu r minus 1 what is mu r value mu r is 5500 minus 1 5500 minus 1 what is the answer it is 5 5,499. 5,499. How many of you got the answer? Yes. Sanjay, right answer. Ansar, very good. Keep going. DJ Tech, right answer. Going to the next question. Question number 20. This is clear now? Yes. So, this is a formula I have to remember. It's again a repeating question. You can see it in many question papers. Number 20. Yes. Important one. An alpha particle and a proton travel with same velocity in a magnetic field perpendicular to the direction of their velocities the ratio of the radii of their circular paths 
it is a repeating question these type you can always expect it can be here in uh, this is alpha particle proton instead of that uh, they can ask like uh, deuteron and alpha particle deuteron and proton like that many possibilities are there so they are asking the ratio of radii of their circular paths so <coughs> hope you remember the formula for the radius what is the formula for radius r is equal to r is equal to mv by qb we have already discussed in a previous question r is equal to mv by qb now here you just note it down with the same velocity velocity is same in a magnetic field so magnetic field is also what same same so here in this formula velocity no need to consider magnetic field is also no need to consider so we can simplify this like r depends on what r is proportional to m by q this is our idea it here it depends only on mass and charge so first particle is alpha so if i writing it is r of alpha will be equal to what or proportional to m of alpha by what q of alpha q of alpha similarly r of proton how can you write m of proton mass of proton divided by charge of proton they are asking the ratio of what the radii so ratio of radii means we need to find r of alpha by what r of proton it is equal to m alpha by q alpha divided by what m proton by q proton that means it is multiplied by q proton by m proton now you should remember the basic relation between the masses and charges of this particle i think all of you know that if q is the charge of proton what is the charge of alpha particle it is 2q double if m is the mass of proton what is the mass of alpha particle 4m 4 times so now we can easily substitute so i'm just taking charge of proton as q and mass of proton as m then mass of alpha particle will be 4m charge of alpha particle will be 2q so q q cancel m m cancel 4 by 2 4 by 2 means 2 by 1 so what is the answer 2 is to 1 2 is to 1 how many of you got the right answer please check please check option c is the right answer for this 2 is to 1 2 is to 1 is there any doubt g yeah hisham and lijetak it's clear i think i don't know where did you made mistake g you may have taken like uh, proton to alpha particle be careful if they are asking the question is proton to alpha particle means it is 1 is to 2 but it is alpha particle to proton means answer is 2 is to 1 okay hope it's clear now can i go to the next question number 21 okay question number 21 listen three wires are situated at the same distance so distance is same there are three wires currents 1 ampere 2 ampere comma 3 ampere flow through these wires in the same direction so all the currents you can see they are flowing in the same direction what is ratio f1 by f2 here f1 is force on wire 1 and f2 is force on wire 2 again an easy question but as i told you don't make silly calculation mistake let's check what is f1 f1 is force on wire 1 on wire 1 how many forces will be there wire 2 will exert a force on it wire 3 will also exert a force on it yes or no so if you are considering wire 2 all are carrying current in the upward direction right so upward direction means this wire 2 will attract this wire 1 towards and in the same way wire 3 also will attract it towards it so total force acting on wire 1 means it is the sum of forces due to second wire and third wire and both will be in the same direction you can add them so let us write the equation for f1 here f1 is equal to what is the formula mu not i1 i2 by 2 pi r so this distance they did not give but it is given that same so if i am taking this distance as r this distance will also be what r okay because the distance is given as same so i am going to write the formula for f1 please do your calculation along with me let us check who is going to find the answer first so f1 force on wire 1 mu not i1 i2 i1 is 1 i2 is 2 by 2 pi r distance i am taking r is it f1 no we need to add force due to the third wire also so i am just adding plus plus mu not 
1 into 3 current is 1 ampere and 3 ampere divided by what is the distance 2 pi into 2 r the distance is 2 r 2 r okay so i am going to take here uh, mu naught by 2 pi r as a common term mu naught by 2 pi r if i am taking common i'll get it is 2 plus 2 plus 3 by 2 so solving i get mu naught by 2 pi r 2 into 2 4 plus 3 7 by 2 7 by 2 this is f1 value f1 value now in the same way Imran is asking why don't we take 2 and 3 like Imran what is f1 f1 is force acting on what force acting on this wire on this wire if you are calculating force force uh, second wire can exert a force on it so second wire exer force exerted by the second wire means you need to take the current in first wire and this wire so force between these two one and two then we are calculating force on the first wire due to the third so in that case we need to take these two current one and three when you are calculating force on second wire only we need to consider that two and three okay right i'll go to that listen now we have to find f2 f2 i hope it is clear imran f2 what is f2 f2 is the force acting on the middle wire this here you need to be careful why because this first wire will attract because currents are in the same directions first wire will attract the second wire towards left third wire will attract but attraction will be towards right so the net force on wire 2 will not be it will not be in the same direction one is towards left and other is towards right and the right one will dominate because there is more current so when you are calculating second force f2 my dear students be careful f2 is the force acting on the second wire that will be this force that means force towards right minus force towards left okay so i'm going to write the formula here mu naught i1 i2 i1 is 2 i2 is 3 i2 is 2 into 3 by 2 pi r minus hope you understand why minus minus mu naught now we need to take first and second mu naught 2 into 1 by what 2 pi r so i am taking mu naught by 2 pi r common i will get 2 into 3 6 minus 1 5 yes so mu naught by 2 pi r into 5 this is f2 now you can calculate they are asking what is f1 by f2 f1 by f2 please calculate it f1 by f2 only we need to find f1 by f2 is equal to what is f1 mu naught by 2 pi r into 7 by 2 so uh, mu naught by 2 pi r will be cancelled out we get 7 by 2 by what 5 okay any mistake here Uh, check this mu naught i1 i2 by 2 pi r this is distance is 2 r mu naught i by 2 pi mu naught by 2 pi r taken out 2 plus 3 by 2 2 pi r comes out yeah so 2 into 2 4 plus 3 7 by 2 correct six minus one it is five uh, Two into three. What happens here? Check it again. By R. Ah, uh, F two is. Ah, sorry. Yes, here is a mistake. Thank you very much. It is not five. It is four, right? Yeah. 6 minus 2 I, I subtracted only one so we got the answer now so this is 4 so we get 7 by 
8. 7 by 8 is the right answer. It's option A. Yes, yes, very good. Right. Uh, Ansh, Rohan, yeah, Atul. Right, 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 right. Thank you very much. It is 7 by 8 for pointing out the mistake. Now, let me go to the next. It's clear now? <coughs> Question number 22. 22. Which of the following can be the susceptibility of a diamagnetic substance? Easy question. Come into the answer. Which of the following can be the susceptibility of a diamagnetic substance? Simple. Diamagnetic substance property, susceptibility of a diamagnetic substance. What is it? Come into your answers quickly. Yeah. Susceptibility of a diamagnetic substance is small and negative. So here you can see there is only one with a negative value. Yes, Satvik. Kevin, Mohammed Ibrahim, everybody got the right answer. So it is option C. Option C is the right answer, my dear students. Yes, we are going to the so please uh, revise along with this. You need to think the other thing also. For a paramagnetic substance, what about chi value? It is small and positive. Ferro ferromagnetic substance is large and positive. Let me go to the next next one. The variation of susceptibility of a paramagnetic substance with the temperature is shown. Again, an easy question. Okay. Yes, uh, Kevin is asking how to score the passing number. Passing mark you are asking Kevin, don't think about that. Our aim should be minimum target should be 50 out of 70. It's not a tough task. Okay, be thorough with all the formulas, all the concepts. You can easily score marks. Okay, tell me the answer for this. How temperature uh, of susceptibility of a paramagnetic substance that is inversely proportional. So, which is the right graph? <coughs> yes, G wrote, got the right one. Inversely proportional relation, which one? Inversely proportional means what is the shape of the graph? Yes, Sanjay, right answer. So, which one is a graph? That's the thing. It is surely it is inversely proportional. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Kevin, don't worry, man. You can score good mark. Okay. Still, we have days. We have days. You just at least ready to work hard in the coming days. Okay. You can score good marks. Okay, next is question number 24. A charge moves in a circle perpendicular to a magnetic field. The time period of revolution is independent of. Time period of revolution. Again, a question based on magnetic Lorentz force. What is the time period? Do you remember? Time period, we have a direct formula. Those who don't remember that formula, we can start with Lorentz force. F is QVB is equal to MV square by R. mv square by r we can cancel this so we get v is equal to qb r divided by m yeah now what is the equation for time period time period is distance by velocity you can write it as 2 pi r by v v value you can substitute we get finally t is equal to what 2 pi m by qb this is the formula for what time period time period t is equal to 2 pi m by qb so what is the answer for this question 2 pi m by qb means may it is independent of what it depends on mass it depends on charge it depends on b it is independent of velocity that is the right answer it is independent of velocity of the particle yes or no yes right very good velocity of the particle time period is independent of velocity let's go to the next question number 25 listen a wire of length l carrying a current i is bent in the form of a circle the magnetic moment is bent in the form of a circle the magnetic moment is Uh, relation Anshi is asking sir could you explain the relation of susceptibility with temperature uh, Ansh, very simple like susceptibility we have three type of materials what are they one is dia para and 
ferro so susceptibility means how its magnetic property depends on temperature for diamagnetism it is independent paramagnetic it is inversely proportional ferromagnetic also it is inversely proportional that's the reason why for ferromagnetic substance if you keep on increasing the temperature at a particular temperature it will lose its susceptibility like it will change into paramagnetic and that temperature is called curie temperature you know that so it is inversely proportional simple direct relation okay yes now look at this question a wire of length l carrying a current i is bent in the form of a circle so there is a wire and we are going to bend it in the form of a circle okay bending that wire in the form of a circle what is the length of the wire it is l current is i so i then what is the magnetic moment this type of question it is asking repeatedly like uh, you need to practice these type of questions what is magnetic moment formula m is equal to what n i a magnetic moment of a current carrying loop we have a direct equation m is equal to n i a where n is number of turns i is the current and a is that area area of that loop so here n is one only because they are not saying there are more turns so n you can take one i is given as i itself the missing factor is what area what is the area of this if you can find the area you will get the answer what is the area here it is given length is what l if you are taking the radius as r you know the area formula is what pi r square pi r square but the problem is we don't know the value of r that you can easily find because if r is a radius circumference will be 2 pi r that 2 pi r only given as what l so if 2 pi r is l r will be equal to what l by 2 pi that you can substitute here so we get i into pi into r square r square means it will be l square by 4 pi square we can cancel this pi so what is the answer it is i l square by 4 pi okay comment your answers yes 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 g got the right answer sanjay got the right answer yes Hisham got the right answer very good keep going so the answer is option C option C clear now so practice this kind of question question number 26 now an electron is revolving in a circular orbit of radius R in a hydrogen atom the angular momentum of the electron is L the dipole moment associated with again a question based on dipole moment again a question based on the same formula moment is equal to NIA but this is it has been asked in a different way like in terms of angular momentum let's see how can we do it it is an electron is revolving electron is revolving in a circular path so let it be the circular path circular path in which electron is revolving so we can take the charge of electron as e it is there in the options also e is the charge of electron mass of electron you can take as m so an electron of mass m and charge e is revolving its angular momentum is given as l angular momentum is given as l then what is its dipole moment so i am going to start with the same formula for dipole moment what is it m is equal to n i a magnetic dipole moment formula m is equal to n i a n is 1 i what is i i is charged by time okay so charge is e by time is time taken to complete one rotation that is capital t i am taking t so i is equal to e by t into area is what pi r square we can take area as pi r square where r is the radius of the path okay right now we need to replace this t t time distance by velocity so 2 pi r by v so e into pi r square divided by time is 2 pi r by what v okay 1 r we can cancel this v 1 pi also we can cancel what we get it is equal to e into v r by what 2 2 this is the dipole moment m but we need the answer in terms of what angular momentum what is angular momentum formula you know that angular momentum of a substance is equal to mvr okay if it is if it is rotating in a circular path the formula is mvr so here vr is there so we need one m also for that that means you can multiply with m so i am writing e into mvr dividing by m we get 2 into m okay right now what is this mvr that is the angular momentum l so the answer is el by 2m 
or e by 2m into l e by 2m into l it is option b how many of you got the right answer yes satik right answer and right answer very good so it is e by 2m into l e by 2m into l is the right answer for this question so please practice this type of questions <coughs> i'm going to the next we have only two minutes remaining Next question, question number 27. The magnetic susceptibility of a paramagnetic substance at minus 73 degrees Celsius is 0 0.0060. Then its value at minus 173 degrees Celsius is, again a question based on temperature dependence, susceptibility, it's a paramagnetic substance. And how it is related? Chi is inversely proportional to temperature, isn't it? Okay, chi is inversely proportional to temperature. Then what about chi 2 by chi 1? It will be equal to T1 by? T2. So then they are asking what is the new susceptibility? Chi 2 only we need to find. It is equal to T1 by T2 into what? Chi 1. Chi 1. Okay. Now we can substitute the value of initial temperature. What is initial temperature? Minus 73 degrees Celsius. Final temperature is minus 173. Please don't substitute the temperature as it is because it is given in degree Celsius. You need to take it in Kelvin. Very simple. T1 is equal to minus 73 degree Celsius. Then it is equal to plus 273. Will be give you how much Kelvin? 200 Kelvin. So 200 Kelvin is what? T1. And what about T2? Minus 173 plus 273 will get what 100 kelvin just substitute here t1 by chi 2 is equal to t1 what is t1 uh, 200 by t2 is 100 into chi 1 0 0.0060 so this will be cancelled out 2 into this what is the answer so it is option d very simple 0 0.0120 is the answer for this question clear or not clear or not please comment ruben is it okay so the answer for this one is option d okay yes 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 no, going to the next 28 now time is up but i'll be taking two three minutes extra the magnetic field induction at a distance four centimeter from a long current carrying wire is 10 power minus 3 tesla the magnetic field induction at a distance 12 centimeter from the same wire so there is a wire there is a wire at how many distance 4 centimeter distance the magnetic field is 10 power minus 3 then at 12 centimeter you can see initially it is 4 then 12 how many times 3 times okay so what is the expression for magnetic field to a straight wire you know that it is mu naught i by 2 pi r mu naught i by 2 pi r they are not giving the current value like only the relation between magnetic field and distance you can see it is inversely proportional b is inversely proportional to r so inversely proportional means what we can write b2 by v1 will be equal to r1 by r2 substitute b2 is equal to r1 by r2 into b1 inversely proportional relation what is r1 r1 is 4 centimeter r2 is 12 centimeter what is b1 10 power minus 3 right we got the answer 1 by 3 1 by 3 means 0 0.33 0 0.33 into 10 power minus 3 that means it is equal to 3.33 into 10 to the power minus 4 tesla the answer is option c 3.33 into 10 to the power minus 4 tesla correct very good right so i'm two more question only two more questions by that we'll be winding up the session 29 a solenoid of 1.5 meter length and 4 centimeter diameter possess 10 turns per centimeter please note that that's a confusing part in this question 10 turns per centimeter you know the magnetic field formula b is equal to what magnetic field inside a solenoid equation is b is equal to mu naught ni so i'm going to substitute what is mu naught value 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 into n what is n value n is number of turns per unit length unit length is not one centimeter students unit length means one meter <coughs> so here 10 turns per centimeter in one centimeter 10 turns then in one meter how many turns into 100 so n value is thousand here into current what is current 5 ampere so we got the answer here isn't it 4 into 5 20 pi into 10 to the power uh, minus 7 and 3 become minus 4 <coughs> so 2 pi into 10 to the power minus 3 tesla right 2 pi into 10 to the power minus 3 tesla that is the answer for this question yes i hope it is clear please uh, watch it again if you did not get enough time to go through it please watch it again 
नेक्स्ट लास्ट क्वेश्चन ए यूनिफॉर्म मैग्नेट इफ लैक्स राइट एंगल्स टू द डायरेक्शन ऑफ मोशन ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रॉन एस अ रिजल्ट द इलेक्ट्रॉन मूव्स इन ए सर्कुलर पाथ ऑफ रेडियस 2 सेंटीमीटर इफ द स्पीड ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन इज डबल्ड देन रेडियस ऑफ द सर्कुलर पाथ r is equal to mv by qb <coughs> so speed doubles there is no other change in any other factors so radius will also be doubled so the answer will be what 4 cm right so the time is up we need to make ready for the next live i hope you enjoyed it so please go through all the questions again practice these type of questions once again uh don't let your confidence level go down as i told you at the beginning yes uh, somebody was there i don't remember the name no need to worry man just be focused uh don't think that i am at the bottom level i am at zero level we have enough time okay if you need our help you can contact us <coughs> we'll be there for your help watch all our live session uh, follow the instructions surely you can score good marks so thank you very much so we'll be continuing on these sessions till 20th of this month you know that <coughs> now at 8 o'clock exactly at 8 o'clock our chemistry sir dig sir is ready with our live session chemical kinetics so see you in the next class <coughs> until then bye take care good night thank you very much bye